if you look at Richet's body of work, he, he, he's a fantastic observer. He has a great eye. He's able to see things that, that other people don't see. He's able to kind of mm. see the potential in three letters or a single mm. word or mm. a short phrase mm. and how they can be juxtaposed with color mm. and other kinds of figurative forms, right? I'm Michael Beirut. I'm a graphic designer. You've chosen Walt. I've chosen a painting by Ed Ruscha. You don't have to look at the label to see what it's called because those three letters are really big, smack dab in the middle of a large square canvas. It's as blunt and forceful as can be. It, it speaks to the fact that uh, Ruscha was actually a really good, capable, professional commercial artist in the early 60s and knew how to do this sort of thing. He actually was taking skills he had professionally and was figuring out a way to twist them that sort of mimic the language of direct communication, but in fact is doing something that's very oblique. That kind of internal contradiction, the craft of communication put in the service of something that is sort of faintly baffling in a way, is I think what I love most about his work and about this piece in particular. But also, of his interest for that, for those three letters, you know, as objects almost. Yeah, yeah. And you look at this painting, it's more than just a picture, it's really a painting. It has yeah, a yeah, physicality, yeah, it has yeah, a space. Yeah. I don't think I've ever actually heard anyone say it well, before. When I looked at that, I didn't think it meant anything other than well, mm. that, that sense of language just enjoying it for its own sake, letters for their own sake, words for their own sake, and then doing it with this sort of single-minded conviction that lands you there. It's just mm -hmm. an amazing combination. But always you got the sense that, boy, he just loved, loved those words. He loves those words. And I, he I said saw, that word was, yeah, oof, was oof. made for a painting. But what he does is play on this tension of, a, of an exclamation that you barely hear, yeah. but that becomes a very loud painting, that yeah. command a room and just be, uh, again, be an extremely loud picture. You know, it has this sort of sonic quality. I mean, mm -hmm. You can hear it when you see it, right? Mm. You, you pronounce it in your, in your... You hear and see it at the same time. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. The word oof can't have any authority. It's not a word that you make uh, consciously. It just comes out of your mouth when you're punched in the stomach, right? And so to take that and to kind of present it in this formal sort of way it has this delicious quality of self-contradiction. Like I said, it's not asking you to do anything. It's not asking you to think anything. It's not asking you to be a certain way. It's just there. And so I think you either look at it and you find it vaguely alarming or it makes you smile. And to me at least, it makes me smile. It really goes to the heart of what makes all those things memorable and provocative for people. And that's why it resonated with me.